Good day, mates. This is uh, take three. Had everything recorded and then the, the, the disc decided that it didn't want to save anything because it was full. My bad. Right, so we already had the House, the Senate and the Governor's elections. So now we do the presidential one really quick. Um, as for a baseline, the slight modification I gave Nebraska second to the Democrats. I don't want to keep reanalyzing it over and over again. Especially when there's no data coming in from that particular district. Funny how that works. So, um, anything to discuss here? Well, let's start off with the safe states. Um, Iowa is polling at the moment 48 to 36 for Trump. Uh, Trump, however, is underestimated in the state by about six points, which means going to be about 54 to 36 at the moment support for Biden in the state or any Democrat for that matter is on point in terms of polling so uh, that is something you need to take into account so 18 point victory for Donald Trump in the state of Iowa next up the state of Ohio um, Trump is at 52 Biden's at 42 again Democrats are polled on point. Republicans are underestimated by about six, so that's going to be a 58 to 42 scenario. Um, polling in the state of Ohio doesn't really take third parties into account, so probably both of them are going to see a slight dip in their support at the moment. Trump plus 16. Uh, next state to discuss the state of Florida in terms of safe territory. Yes. Florida is now a safe Republican state. Trump is polling at 49.7. Biden is polling at 40.7. So that's a nine-point gap. However, Trump is underestimated by 3.3. Biden is underestimated by half a point. So that's 53 to 41 and a half for Trump. So that's an 11-point victory. As a result, I'm putting Florida. Safe column. Next state... Texas. Trump is polling at 51.3. Biden is polling at 42. Both individuals are underestimated by about three points each. In this case, the underestimation or the undecided factor is slightly in favor of the Democrats, making this a 10-point victory for Trump. Um, I could do, instead of one decimal, three decimals, and I'll figure out whether it's over 10 or under 10. I don't really give a shit. I'm just going to put it at Trump plus 10. Uh, for this matter, I'm saying it's on the margin, therefore likely. Alright, uh, there isn't a single state of the likelies that is in the safe category for Biden. Colorado is at 44. For Biden and Trump is at 37.5. Taking polling errors into account, Biden is slightly under 50. Trump is slightly over 40. Not yet 10 points. Uh, New Mexico, Biden plus 8, taking polls and polling errors into account, stays plus 8. New Hampshire, Biden's at plus 8. However, Republicans are slightly more underestimated. It becomes a Biden plus 7 state instead. Um, those are all the likely Democrats, likely Republicans. Let's start off alphabetically with Arizona. Trump is at 48.3. Biden is at 43.3. Both are underestimated by about two points, which means Trump is over the hump. He is at 50%. Biden's at 45. So that's a 5.1 victory for Trump. Likely margin. Uh, the next state to discuss would be uh, C, alphabetically, so that would be Georgia. Um, Trump is at 49. Biden is at 45. Polling errors into account, it becomes a Trump plus, sorry, three state. Leans, so this one's going to be adjusted in the next model to make it a toss-up to, to discuss. Iowa, Fat, Maine, I'm going to skip for now. Uh, Michigan. Trump is at 46, Biden is slightly under 45. Toss-up te territory here. However, Republicans are underestimated by four points in the state, Democrats by one. Means that Trump is almost at 50%, Biden's at 46. 
So a lean margin. Trump is the 47th president. Minnesota. Biden's at 43, Trump is at 41. However, this is taking third party into account, and we don't know what the third party appearance is going to be in the state of Minnesota. If Kennedy makes it to the ballot, and there's a chance that he will, it becomes a tilt Democrat state. However, I'm going to put it as a lean Democrat instead. Uh, Nevada. Trump is at 47, Biden's at 42. Taking polling misses into account, it becomes 48 to 45 in the favor of Trump, slightly under three points. Means that it's a lean Trump margin. Next state to discuss, North Carolina. Trump is at 48, slightly above. Biden is at 43, slightly below it. Um, taking polling misses into account, it becomes 51 to 44. So slightly under seven, slightly over seven point victory for Trump. Stays in the likely category. Pennsylvania, 48 to 47 for Trump. Again, toss up category in this particular case. However, polling misses into account, it becomes a 50.6 to 48.3, so slightly over two points. Lean margin. Last two states, Virginia and uh, Wisconsin to discuss, and there we go back to Maine. Virginia, Biden plus four, taking polling misses into account. It stays that way. And Wisconsin, uh, 49 for Trump, 47 for Biden. Um, basically, Trump is going to win by about five points, and here's why. So, in 2016, Trump was polled at 39%, Clinton at 45 However, uh, Trump got 47% of the vote, Clinton got 46 and a half. That kind of miss, eight points for Trump, is mainly due to the driftless region, so that would be Wisconsin's third district, which is notoriously underestimated in polling in terms of the fraction of people taken into account for it. What does this mean for this particular polling cycle? Well, I'm going to adjust for that, making sure that the driftless are being properly represented. 2020 um, polling headed 51 to 44 in favor of Biden and the result was 49 and a half to 49 which means once again Trump was underestimated by five points. So polling in Wisconsin has become slightly better however it's not good enough. So I think there's going to be about a three to four point miss for Trump Which gives him 51.8, 52.8, that particular reach, so about 52%. Biden would get about 48. Maybe slightly lower, depends on what the third parties are going to do in the state. Gives him Trump a lean victory. Uh, at the moment, Trump is at 312 and Biden at 224. Let's discuss Maine really quickly, because that is a more difficult scenario in terms of constitutionality. So, the Maine Constitution says that each individual congressional district gets to decide who they vote for. The state at large votes for whoever has the popular vote majority. That's how it works. Now, here's a fun part. Um... If the first district, which would be the the south, so that's uh, Portland, that's Augusta, Kennebec, that kind of region. If they go to Biden by 10 points, and the second district, which is the rest of the state, they go to Trump by 13 points, well, the state goes to Trump. That's how you need to look at this. So it basically, it is in terms of performance of the individual congressional districts. And this is where we need to take a good look at how the performance is going to be. So at the moment, I have a model, or calculated a model. It is 37.7 for Trump, 39.7 for Biden. So you think, oh, two-point victory. Here's the problem. Maine at large in 2016 had Trump at 39.5. He got 45. So it's five points under estimation. Then you have the um, 
2020 race, Trump at slightly over 40. He got 44% of the vote, so again, underestimation by 4 points. Clinton was polled at 44, got 48. Biden was polled at 51, he got 53. So on average, that means the Democrats are underestimated by slightly under 3 points. Republicans are underestimated by almost 5. Take that into account. It becomes a margin of error race so tiny it's about, what, a thousand votes going one way or the other. At the moment, it's Biden. I'm going to give it, for that reason, a tilt Democrat reason or uh, leaning. However, this can go either way. This main at large, at the moment with the data that I have and the data that's available, is going to be the closest state in the 2024 presidential election. Uh, 312 for Trump, 226 for Biden. Trump is re-elected, as the previous video shows. He gets a narrow House majority, mainly filled with neocons, and a narrow Senate majority, again, mainly filled with neocons. So, um, that's it for May. Uh, next month around, I'm going to have a more uh, important version of the model where I'm going to take each congressional district into account to make sure that the House representative election becomes more uh, in line with what polling actually suggests instead of just being gut instinct at the moment. So that's where we are right now. Uh, furthermore, there's going to be an update video regarding a bunch of shit that I'm doing on the site. Keep that in mind. Thank you guys for watching. See you next time. Cheers.